Hi, I'm Paige Claybo, and I am the Director of Programs and Events for the Coleman Chamber of Commerce, and I also sit on the Friends of the Public Libraries Board of Coleman County. And today, I'm going to be reading to you a book from the Dolly Parton Imagination Library series called Hugo and the Impossible Thing. To donate to the Imagination Library, you can visit imaginationlibrary.org. At the edge of the forest stood an impossible thing. It was a jumbled mess of giant boulders, thorny mazes, raging rivers, and towering cliffs. The animals in the forest often wondered what was beyond the impossible thing, but no one knew because getting through it would be impossible. And because everyone said it was impossible, no animal ever tried. Until one day, a curious little dog named Hugo sat near the edge of the impossible thing and thought to himself, how do we know the impossible thing is impossible if no one's ever tried to get through it? On his way home, Hugo visited his friend, Mr. Bear, who was lumbering around the cave. Hey, Mr. Bear, said Hugo, do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? Of course not, Mr. Bear replied. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be someone big and strong like me. Have you ever tried? asked Hugo. Well, uh, no admitted Mr. Bear, because the impossible thing is impossible. I see, said Hugo. Well, tomorrow I think I'm gonna try. Hugo visited Little Fox, who was pondering in her den. Hey, Little Fox, said Hugo. Do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? No way, Lip scoffed Little Fox. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be someone quick and clever like me. Have you ever tried? Asked Hugo. Not a chance said Little Fox, because I'm clever enough to know how impossible things are that are impossible. I see, said Hugo. Well, tomorrow I think I'm gonna try. Hugo visited Miss Otter, who was bathing in her pond. Hey, Miss Otter, said Hugo. Do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? I'm sorry, but no, Miss Otter replied. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be a skilled swimmer like me. Have you ever tried? asked Hugo. Of course not, said Miss Otter. It's just as they say, impossible. I see, said Hugo. Hmm. Well, tomorrow I think I'm going to try. Hugo visited old Mr. Goat, who was balancing on a branch way up in his tree. Hello up there, old Mr. Goat, said Hugo. Do you think I could make it through the impossible thing? Definitely not, old Mr. Goat grunted. If anyone could make it through the impossible thing, it would be an expert climber like me. Have you ever tried? Asked Hugo. Why, would I? Replied Mr. Goat. I've lived in this forest longer than anyone, and the impossible thing has always been impossible. That's what I've heard, said Hugo. Well, tomorrow I think I'm going to try. As curious little Hugo began to fall asleep that night, he thought to himself, everyone keeps telling me the impossible thing is impossible, but no one has ever tried to make it through the impossible thing. Even though I'm not as big and strong as Mr. Bear or as quick and clever as little Fox, and I can't swim like Miss Otter or climb like old Mr. Goat, I still feel like I have to try. And so, Hugo drifted off to sleep and dreamt of the impossible thing and what might lie beyond it and of being the first in the forest to get through it. The next morning, Hugo stopped by old Mr. Goat's tree, but he wasn't there. He passed Mrs. Otter's pond, but she wasn't there. Little Fox wasn't in her den and Mr. Bear wasn't in his cave. When Hugo finally arrived at the edge of the forest, he was surprised to find Mr. Bear, Little Fox, Miss Otter, and Old Mr. Goat waiting for him. In all the years I've been in the forest, explained Mr. Bear, everyone has always said getting through the impossible thing was possible. Yes, agreed Little Fox. So no one's ever thought to try. Until you, Hugo, Miss Otter grinned. So if you really want to try, grumbled Old Mr. Goat, we'll help you. Mr. Bear assured him. Hugo looked at his friends and smiled. Let's try to make it through the impossible thing together. And wouldn't you know, with the help of big and strong Mr. Bear, Hugo and his friends moved the giant boulders. 
With the help of quick and clever little Fox, Hugo and his friends found their way through the tricky, thorny maze. And with the help of sweet Mrs. Otter, Hugo and his friends swam all the way across the raging rivers. And with the help of grumpy old Mr. Goat, Hugo and his friends climbed all the way up the towering cliffs. When old Mr. Goat nudged Hugo up the very top of the tallest towering cliff, Hugo became the first in the forest ever to make it through the impossible thing. And there, just beyond the peak of the impossible thing, was the most perfect place in all the forest. The sun was warmer, the shade was cooler, the berries were sweeter, and the grass was greener. Hugo, Mr. Bear, Little Fox, Miss Otter, and Old Mr. Goat spent the rest of the day there and many days after. And from that day on, thanks to curious little Hugo and most his most supportive friends, the impossible thing became known as the extremely difficult but absolutely positively possible thing. The end.